Welcome to the 2017 Reseda League season. With the draft approaching this coming Saturday, I thought it would be a good time to present a brief overview of the upcoming season. So let's take a look at the league's Mount Rushmore so far. We have James, Omar, and Uncle Dwayne, who finished in the top three last season. It's a small sample size of one season so far, uh, but at the moment, these elites from last season fulfill that role. So far, they are the teams to beat this season. Or are they? You better not ignore those in our league who have actually won championships in the past in our league and other leagues. James, Tanny, Mike, and me. These players actually know what it takes to become a champ. And once a champ, always a champ. These are the real players with credibility based on the greater sample size of all leagues played in all years. Throughout the season, you're gonna hear some people talk and they think they know what they're talking about. And they know quite a bit, but they haven't really done anything in fantasy. These champs that you see to your left, they've done something. And we have eternal bragging rights. What else can I say? Now let's introduce the rookie class. Antti Carmen, Sarah, and Isaac. Antti Carmen will of course be co-owning with Uncle Dwayne, who was an elite owner last season. Isaac will be tag teaming with his dad, Omar, who also was an elite player last season. So therefore, Sarah will have this year's only team that has solely that is solely owned by a rookie owner. Now let's discuss what has changed for this season. Last season we had 14 total teams and eight playoff slots. This year we have 12 total teams and six playoff slots because eight playoff slots would have been too many. That means if we had eight playoff slots, there would have been some mediocre teams that could have just cruised into the postseason and the playoffs. Uh, we don't really want that to happen. So the top six teams will be known as the Sterling Six and there will be some special incentive to be a top two team because those teams actually earn a first round playoff by and advanced automatically to the final four round. Now here's what happens when two or more teams are tied for the same win-loss record. This is where the seeding tiebreaker comes into play. Last year the seeding tiebreaker was head-to-head. -head. This year and likely in all years to follow, the seeding tiebreaker will be total points for. That is the total amount of points you score throughout the season. For example, on the left side you'll see that there are three teams that end the regular season at six and seven. Only one of these teams will be seed number six and actually make it into the playoffs. So how do you rank these three teams? Again, it's total points for. Because team A has scored the highest of the three teams, team A uh, gets a playoff berth and teams B and C do not. They actually miss the playoffs. Now here are a few other league settings to note that are a little different from last year. The money prize distribution is now $400, $150, and $50 to the first, second, and third place winners. Also, if five or more teams vote to veto an accepted trade during its two-day review period, the trade will be rejected. Last season, seven teams were actually required for the trade rejection. This year, it's only five. So the draft is this Saturday, September the 2nd at 10 a.m. Please arrive 15 minutes early to ensure that all systems are a go. Now make sure you don't overrate it nor underrate the draft. Last season, John's drafted roster earned him the best drafter award, but his team fizzled throughout the season. But it would be a mistake to say that there is margin for error in the draft because it is the difference between merely making the playoffs and being a championship team. So don't overrate it, don't underrate it. Keep the draft in its place. So have fun preparing for the draft and God bless.